Thanks again for joining me here at ButnowMinistry.org. And today we're going to go through part two of why I don't put commentaries above the King James Bible. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, we find Paul's my gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel of Christ, which, by the way, the gospel of Christ is not mentioned in your new translations. They just make it the gospel, which is wrong. Okay, the gospel of Christ would be Paul's my gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the gospel that saves us today, according to not the promises of Israel, according to not the circumcision, according to not the kingdom, but according to the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16, 25, right? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved. Verse 2. If ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. In verse 3. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And verse 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Paul calls this gospel, the one that he declares in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 1, he calls this one his own three times. Peter, James, and John never, ever call it their own. Romans 2.16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Romans 16.25, Now to him that is of power to establish you. Now if you're using a new translation, the word establish is not there. It's establish, which completely changes the meaning of the verse. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. What's the preaching of Jesus Christ? It's according to the revelation of the mystery, which, by the way, no denomination, non-denomination is preaching. They're preaching Jesus Christ according to the kingdom, according to Israel's promises, and not according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. And 2 Timothy 2.8, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, Paul declares. Paul also makes it clear that his gospel is not after Peter, James, and John. Paul certifies it. Galatians 1.11, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So that means, aren't Peter, James, and John men? And Galatians 1.12, For I neither received it of men, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Funny, look what it says in the homilies by E. Herndall, the gospel which Paul preached. It was received, not an originated gospel. It was received, not an originated gospel. Can you believe this? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. He tells us that he received it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Galatians 1.12 and by the way, he doesn't tell you what translations he's using in, this, um, hom in the homilies. He had the more confidence in it that it was not of himself, and we have also. It came from the very central source of all. Paul's gospel of Christ came from Christ. Some preachers of the gospel are so able that they feel bound to originate. They throw a new light upon the truth instead of the old light. They preach as they consider a magnificent gospel. But, uh, but it is unfortunately of man and thus worthless. Man can do many things, but he cannot make a gospel. When he tries, he advertises his folly. With Paul, we should get as near as we can to the fountainhead. The streams are apt to become contaminated. So he says it was received, not an originated gospel. But Paul says he received it not after man. And if you noticed, when he says it's not an originated gospel, he only, puts, he only commentates on the first part of the verse. He doesn't believe the verse. For I deliver unto you first of all that which I also received. And he stops there. What about Galatians 1.11? Brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So it is an originated gospel. It was only given to the Apostle Paul. So hopefully you're not putting the homilies above God's perfectly preserved word. How about John Trapp's commentary on the Old and New Testaments? Verse 1, And wherein ye stand? He gives the Greek, 
And then he says, a military term, as martyr noteth, Satan overthroweth the faith of some. And then he goes to 2 Timothy 2.18, and by this very engine wherewith he assaulted these Corinthians, I bid, so that the apostle was fain to make apology. And then he goes to 1 Corinthians 15.19, to make a barricado. I mean, does any of that make sense? John Trapp greeks his Bible into nonsense, Clearly not a Bible believer, but a Greeker. How about John Calvin's verse commentary? Now I make known to you. Now I make known to you. He now enters on another subject, the resurrection, the belief of which among the Corinthians had been shaken by some wicked persons. It is uncertain, however, whether they doubted merely as the ultimate resurrection of the body or as to the immorality of the soul also. It is abundantly well known that there were a variety of errors at this point. Some philosophers contended that the souls are immortal. What does the Apostle Paul say about philosophy? Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. He says not to follow philosophy of men. And here he puts the philosophers above God's perfectly preserved word. And then he says about now I make known to you, that's not even in the verse. John doesn't even have a Bible. Wow. Let's take a look at another verse. How about Matthew chapter 1 in the Old Testament for Israel? The Bible tells us that the New Testament is not given to Israel until Christ dies on the cross, right? So let's look at Hebrews 9, 15 through 17, because that gives us definition of when the New Testament is given to the children of Israel and only the children of Israel on the authority of Ezekiel 36, Jeremiah 31, and Hebrews chapter 8. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Verse 16, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. And verse 17, for a testament is of a force after men are dead. So that means the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which so many pastors claim, is not the New Testament because a force for a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So the New Testament in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before the cross had no strength because he did not die yet. So let's see what the commentaries say about Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, which we know on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17, is Old Testament. Okay? The book of generations of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, that's Matthew 1.1 1, 1 in your King James Bible. What does Albert Barnes say on that? This work is designed to occupy a place which is supposed to be unappropriated in attempts to explain the New Testament. What? Matthew 1.1 1, 1 is Old Testament. Albert calls it the New Testament. Hmm, not a Bible believer. How about the biblical illustrator? the general introduction to the New Testament. It calls it the New Testament. Again, not a Bible believer. How about Adam Clark's commentary on the Bible? Preface to the Gospel of St. Matthew with a short account of his life. The general title of this latter collection of sacred books, which, as well as the former, all Christians acknowledge to have been given by immediate inspiration from God, is in the Greek, which we translate... The New Testament, but which should rather be translated the New Covenant, or if it were lawful to use a paraphrasis, the New Covenant, including a testamentary declaration and bequest. For this is precisely the meaning of the system of justice, holiness, goodness, and truth. So he calls it, Adam Clark calls it the New Testament based on the Greek, not being a Bible believer, not based on Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. How about Gabalene's an annotated Bible? The Gospel of Matthew stands first among the Gospels and in the New Testament because it belongs in the first place and may be rightly termed the Genesis of the New Testament. Genesis, the first book of the Bible, contains in itself the entire Bible. So again, he calls it the New Testament, not a Bible believer. 
How about F.B. Hole's commentary on the New Testament? The wording of the first verse of the New Testament directs our thoughts back to the first book of the Old, inasmuch as generation is the translation of the Greek word Genesis. Matthew in particular, and the whole New Testament in general, is the book of Genesis of Jesus Christ. Ouch! Was Genesis in the Old Testament? No, because the law wasn't given to Israel until Exodus 19, and the law that was given to Israel, the law covenant, is the Old Testament on the authority of Exodus 34, 28. So, to say that Genesis and Matthew are the same is completely crazy on the authority of the Bible, and to say that it's New Testament is completely not believing it on the authority of Hebrews 9, 15 through 17. It is crazy that people will put, and I did it myself, okay? When you put commentaries above the King James Bible, above God's perfectly preserved word, this is what you get. You get people, you get pastors, you get scholars that do not have a Bible, that do not believe it, that do not Ultimately, they're teaching people, if you did not understand what you know, if you did not understand mid-Acts dispensational Pauline right division of your King James Bible, okay, you would believe the footnote in your Bible that says New Testament before the book of Matthew. You would not believe God's perfectly preserved word that the New Testament begins with the death of the testator at the cross, after Jesus Christ dies on the cross is when the New Testament for the children of Israel begins. Notice some of these commentaries say it's the New Testament for Christians. Christians, the word Christian wasn't mentioned until Acts chapter 11. And by the way, people called Paul Christians. Paul never used the term. And you have to get that one straight too. Not that that really mattered. I mean, that's not a huge... But to say that you are a Christian in the Old Testament under the law before the cross is complete heresy, really. That's like saying large shrimp. That's like saying, that's an oxymoron, don't you think? There were no Christians in the Old Testament under the law. But yet, because they don't believe their Bible, because they don't they correct it instead with the Greek and the Hebrew. This is what you get in your commentaries. And it's a shame because I used to buy study Bibles and commentaries and read those first and put those above God's perfectly preserved word. But we know that that is incorrect on the authority of Psalm 138.2 where God himself puts his own word above himself. And that's what we ought to do today in the Dispensation of Grace. Thanks again for listening. Email me with any doctrinal questions. And guys, I would prefer that you would email me and not go through YouTube. YouTube is seen by thousands, and I would rather not commentate or answer questions on the YouTube sites. I have my website, and that is one of the purposes of it that you would go to the contact page and email me directly questions so that I can email you back um, answers to your questions, okay? Because to put an answer to your question on YouTube, it, it's very lengthy and it's not, honestly, it's not personal and this is a question that you're asking, not the world. Okay, and I want to answer you directly. Okay, because for one, I don't know who I'm answering, and two, if you're not mid Acts Pauline dispensational and you're not a right divider of your King James Bible, what I have to say may, may be strong meat for you, and I may have to dumb it down so you understand it. Okay, and based on some of the questions, I can understand kind of where you're at just based on the question. So, again, just make sure that 
you're not using the YouTube site for questions, go directly to my contact page on my website at buttnowministry.wix. buttnowministry.wix.com slash buttnowministry and go through the, the site to ask me questions. Or you can go directly to, I give you my email addresses too at buttnowministry at gmail.com and reckonyourselfdead at gmail.com and you can just email me that way too if you don't want to go through the website. So, But thanks again for your um, questions. Again, keep listening, keep studying the material and the questions should, your questions should answer themselves just on God's perfectly preserved word and your understanding of mid-acts dispensational Pauline right division of your King James Bible, God's perfectly preserved word. Thanks again for listening. Don't forget to email me for any doctrinal questions and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again.